Joined now by ESPN NFL insider Dan Graziano and also Jason Reed, senior NFL writer with the undefeated. All right, so Dan, let's talk about this game. Classic. Obviously, the offense was there. What message do you think this game sends about the state of the game? I think the message is this is where it's headed in terms of an offensive point scoring emphasis. You see the culmination of years of rule changes that favor offense, of, you know, sports science designed to maximize performance, of offensive head coaches. 20 head coaches have been hired the last three years. 15 of them have come from the offensive side of the ball. Teams and owners want to know when they interview a head coach candidate, what ideas do you have for scoring points? Because that is what we're all about in the NFL right now. Look, it's an extreme case. There are not a lot of teams capable of scoring 50 points in a game. Two of them happened to play each other on Monday night, and it lived up to all the advance hype. But the, the possibility of a 54-51 to 51 game kind of is here to stay now, even if you don't expect it every single week. I got to tell you, it makes Jason Reed, it makes me think, where is this game going? Could we see even more? I want to see 60-point games. <laughs> you know, I, I got to ask you, um, you look at a game like this, and the NFL obviously always interested in broadening their audience. What do you think this kind of game does for broadening their audience? Well, clearly, it, it's entertaining for fans. When, when you see the type of skill level on display, and let's not forget the skill level of those two young quarterbacks, the skill level of a lot of the outside people, it, not every team has that. But for teams that do have it, for teams that you saw at, out there last night, a team like the Saints, these teams are going to ra raise the level of interest in the game because, as Dan was saying, this is the culmination of a ton of rules changes and when you have these type of rule changes designed to bring in, to draw in more people, and you actually have guys who can execute it at a high level, this is the end result. And the end result is to make fans very happy. Yeah, best overnight ratings for a Monday night football game since 2014. Some of the NFL has got to be pleased to hear. You know who I don't think was very pleased in all this? Mexico City. They really lost out on this one. I mean, this was big. But the NFL re-upped their deal with Mexico City. There's going to be a game played there next year. What did they lose in all of this? What did Mexico City lose yes. or the NFL? Yes. Because the NFL, Mexico I mean, City. is trying to broaden itself, its audience mm -hmm. and it'll continue. But in terms of Mexico City, yeah, I mean, there was going to be, it was going to be a showcase. It was going to you know, be about the environment that the game was being played in, how fans are embracing the game there, uh, what, what's going on in the, in the community there around the game. And so, obviously, they lost a year of that. But the NFL goes right back and says, we'll come back next year. Obviously, I'm sure they will do everything they can <laughs> to make sure that the field is in decent shape. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, a Shakira concert 12 days before the scheduled game time shouldn't have been a problem, oh. but it was. So that yeah. they obviously know to look out for that. But in terms of Mexico City, you know, being a showcase venue for the NFL, it, it's, it's definitely a black eye that they didn't, they didn't pull it off. Let's talk about some other things going on in the NFL. The Washington Redskins are on a lot of people's minds after that really gruesome injury that Alex Smith suffered. The parallels are unbelievable. You're talking about him being sacked by J.J. Watt, former Defensive Player of the Year, reminiscent of Joe Theismann being sacked by um, uh, Lawrence Taylor all those years back. Same day. I mean, imagine that. Mark Sanchez now signed. Let's get into this. Yeah. Why do you think they decided to sign Mark Sanchez? Look, they're going to go with Colt McCoy as the starter. He's been the backup there for years. He knows the offense. They're confident in him. They needed a backup. They didn't have another quarterback on the roster. And they have a game the day after tomorrow. So the, the backup question was, who can come in right now, and if he has to play Thursday in Dallas, could, could handle things? There are two or three coaches on the Washington staff that have experience with Mark Sanchez that have coached him before in previous stops. So he has some level of familiarity with what they want to do. And I think that's what was most appealing about him as an option. They needed an option right away who, if something happens to Colt McCoy, could actually come in and play and play competently on Thursday. And that of the, you know, this is the best of a, Kind of a shaky bunch. Yeah, and he's got a, he knows the situation, he knows the offense, so that will work in his favor, at least the coaches. So, Jason Reed, whenever there becomes a job available, it always comes back to Colin Kaepernick. Why not take the chance on him? What do you think about Kaepernick in this situation and whether or, or why he wasn't considered, or, or if he was, why he wasn't given that job? Well, having covered the Washington Redskins previously and knowing the thinking of that organization, they would have signed the cadaver at Weekend at Bernie's before they signed <laughs> Colin Kaepernick. I mean, I mean that, 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 that was never on the table. And I know that fans on Twitter had asked about this. That was never on the table. Now, look, Colin hasn't played since the 2016 season, so you can obviously mount an argument to saying that he would not be someone who could come in and help them. I would submit that Mark Sanchez, with all due respect, is not going to come in and help them either. 
no matter when he played because of the skill level. Obviously, you're at a point of diminishing returns at this late in the season trying to get someone, but Kaepernick was never on the table. Do you think he ever gets signed at this point? I know we ask that question every single time a job becomes available. Well, again, you know, from talking to people in Kaepernick's camp, when I have talked to them about it, he still does want to play. And I believe his girlfriend put out uh, in social media that he's working hard, he still wants to play. But I think for him right now, if he's ever going to play again, and I, I've written that I don't think he ever will. I don't think anyone will ever sign him. But if someone does, what you're going to need to do is get him into a camp. Because regardless of how hard he's been working out, there's a difference in not getting NFL reps, not getting practice reps at all. And I do think that if it's ever going to happen for him again, it's not going to happen in this and type of situation. It's been a long time since he got those NFL reps. Jason, Dan, thank you so much. Appreciate it, guys.